Welcome back to the Open Source CubeSat Workshop 2019. Yeah! <laughs> and we're starting with the workshop sessions today, where you're going actually to work in groups still, and they're going to guide you through this, so don't worry. And the next topic is Metasat. It's actually something that started last year, right? So with discussions with uh, you guys, Diana was here and, uh, and the Libre Space Foundation, and you went on on this. And actually, it's, it's a cool project. So you will tell us more. I won't tell more about it. So I hope you're ready. Take your seats. And this is uh, Cathy and Daniel, right? So from Boston. They arrived yesterday. They're fresh. All right. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, as I said, my name is Katie Fry, and this is um, Daniel Chivas. And um, as he also mentioned, um, myself and uh, we're well, sorry, we're librarians at the Center for Astrophysics in Boston. Um, there we go, a little better. And um, as he had mentioned, uh, I was here uh, well, at OSCW in Madrid last year uh, with our boss Dana Boquin, who's the head librarian at Wolbach at the Center for Astrophysics. And uh, she pitched this topic about uh, metadata for satellites. And we had a really good discussion session there. We really you know, talked with you guys, learned a lot about what you guys thought was useful. Um, and you know, we took that and ran with it. And we won a grant from Sloan to actually develop a metadata schema. So that's what we'd like to talk with you about and get your feedback on today. OK. so. Uh, metadata isn't the easiest topic to talk about, uh, nor is it the funnest, but at its core, uh, a metadata schema is a standardized set of uh, categories and elements to describe anything. So uh, a schema could be useful for communicating, uh, transferring, um, crosswalking information between any parties, so two databases, uh, two organizations, um, and they're particularly useful when um, there is very little room for error. So uh, one example um, with elements that I like to use when talking about metadata is the car, so automobiles. So for example, um, for the category car in a schema, uh, it would have elements such as like, the make, the model, the year, um, where it was manufactured, and so on. So uh, the process of like identifying the elements is actually quite easy. And so we've been working on this with uh, identifying elements that will define small satellite missions. Um, the difficult part is agreeing on how they are organized and uh, how they're defined. So although agreeing on like the significance of elements is also challenging, um, the process can be rewarding, especially when we work together as a, uh, as a community um, and giving as uh, much space as possible for uh, voices to be heard. So uh, this is what we're trying to do with Metasat. Um, so we would like to organize uh, categories and elements for um, small satellite missions. And let me change this. Yeah, so, so in a way that we wouldn't be able to make a general schema for all cars, uh, we wouldn't, our intention with Metasat isn't to make a schema for all satellites. Um, this would be impossible given the thousands of CubeSats and small sats that are already existing and many more in, in the future. Um, instead, uh, Metasat aims to, co to connect all the common features of small satellite missions, particularly the hardware, the data, and the software. Um, so in this way, we create a uh, common structure and language that's standardized. Um, so this is useful when running missions, building databases, um, operating ground station networks, and so on. So we will first um, pilot the uh, schema through our partnership with the Libre Space Foundation. Um, they are going to implement Metasat on the SATNOGS network in their databases. And we are also partnered with NASA. Um, they're going to use Metasat on our, um, on their, the small, small spacecraft systems virtual institutes uh, databases. So for example, Spoon is one of them. So. Here we go. So um, as a uh, completely open and collaboratively developed um, schema, we want to incorporate feedback from as many people as possible um, in defining uh, both our categories and our elements. And so we'd like to do that today. 
So since talking with people already, um, both in person and online, we've come up with about eight general categories uh, used to define a small satellite mission at the present moment. Um, so we'd like to break people up into eight different groups and have everyone try to define uh, and create their own elements for each of these um, and to organize them in the, the best way they think they can. All right, so start looking at, look at this list and start thinking about which topic interests you the most. Um, as Daniel was saying, you know, we're interested in, in hearing your feedback, what kind of concepts and keywords come to mind when you think of these topics. Um, we'd like you to write those down. We have some sticky notes here for the groups. And then, in addition to just writing down the words that come to mind, kind of try to organize them. Um, we have a schema that we've kind of, we started working on, and we'll, we'll show that to you, but we just like to get your guys you're thinking on that first um, before we show you anything. <laughs> this is the work group part of it. Okay, so um, if you're interested, in this, everyone wants to get up and, and move around the room here to get to your group. If you're interested in looking at the schema for observation, if you go to the back corner over there, uh, for mission, it's going to be up here in the front. For you know, mission people is going to be in the back in the middle. Um, network ground stations in the front middle. Uh, satellite communication systems in the back over there, and satellite navigation systems up here. Um, satellite payloads, instrument, and hardware are going to be on the side over here. And brave people who want to talk about software can join us here on H for Group 8. So, <laughs> um, and so please go ahead and, and move to the area of the room for the topic you're most interested in. And uh, we'll hand out these as well. All right. And we'll collect everyone back here in about 20 minutes to do um, some, you know, discussion out again. To, we break up in different sections. Actually, eight sections where people are defining schemas, metadata of different topics, observation for the first mission, mission people, network run stations, satellite communication systems, satellite navigation systems, satellite payloads, instruments or hardware, and software. All right, everyone. Time's up. Uh, sounds like there's been some really, really great discussions. Um, so we'd like to go around the groups and have every group kind of share a, a little bit of what you've talked about, OK? So uh, Dan is going to take the mic around. Let's start with group one, observation, in the back. We're um, ready to discuss out. So I know there's a great conversation. We'd really like to hear more later. You can't hear us? All right, oh, that was loud, okay. Um, so we'd like everyone to share um, what you've been discussing in your groups. And so we're gonna go ahead and start in the back with observation, Dana's gonna take a mic around. So, um, the observation is an incident that occurs and we observe it, that's the main principle here. So, um, First of all, we decide what is worth ob observing and what is not, you know, before we do the actual observation. We, we, we utilize the existing data sources on the spacecraft from the payload and the sensors to have the observation. Um, then we evaluate, evaluate the data and categorize the observable events. Hence, we say if, it, if it's an error or if it's a valuable information. And after these three steps, we identify the time of the incident, the priority of the event, and uh, the effect it has on the whole mission. And thus, we have the criticality of the event. That's briefly. Thank you. OK. Yeah. That sounds great. All right. Um, let's go ahead and um, talk to group two, which was about the mission uh, in general. Uh, so we interpreted this as like when you're talking to someone, what do you, what questions do you ask? Uh, what questions do you ask to interpret like 
what their mission is. Mm -hmm. um, so the first question is name, and the second question is purpose. And then from there, we came up with a couple of other categories that you would ask. So timeline, um, ownership, and partners, which is related to funding. And then slightly more technical, oh, slightly more technical, um, ground architecture and communication structure, and then orbit, and then kind of like the outcome is legacy and results. All right, thank you. That sounds, that sounds really helpful. Um, let's go on to group three, which was mission people. So they're in the back over there. Hello. Um, okay, so we were the mission people and we were a little bit uh, thinking about the role that this group of people might have. I mean, we're talking about the administration, uh, coordinators, PI, all the people that uh, organize the rest of the mission. Um, well, uh, first, the person has to be in charge of the deadlines is something very important. Uh, the costs, uh, mm -hmm. not only like uh, knowing what money do you have and like for your own uh, goal, but also like what can you spend and how everything more or less is going to cost and prevent the risks. Um, the, you're in charge of the mission results, like your face is the one that is going to be when everyone talks about this mission. So yeah, you need it to success, because if not, uh, probably you're going to be done. <laughs> um, marketing, we said, but it's not, not they're completely in charge of like the marketing towards everyone, but more or less to sell it to uh, any business companies that might be interested in investing in this mission or space agencies, whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, management, uh, obviously you need uh, to be, uh, you have a group of people and you need to know when you have to assign a work for someone. Uh, the law, uh, yeah, you are in charge of knowing uh, what things you can do and what things you don't. Yeah. It's very important and yeah. And hiring, I mean, uh, you need to, uh, you have people that have to work for you, you need it to success, you need a good group of people that are going to work for you. Um, we were kind of talking about the problems also, but more likely to the solutions of these problems, because uh, when we said problems, instantly it was people. <laughs> Every or a group uh, that is working is going to have problems with people, mm -hmm. not only between them, but also like you uh, have to sell it to someone and that person might like it or not, depends on their own backstory. So people is complicated. But uh, uh, thinking about the, um, the, own, uh, the own group, uh, something important was a proactive environment because you need people that is going to like to work and to improve your own, uh, your own team. So you need to have leadership. You cannot be someone that is like, hey, do you remember that you have to <laughs> yeah. have this done by like a month ago? Mm -hmm. No, that's not something you can do. Like, you need to, you not, don't need to be like a dictator, but you need to be able to say, hey, this must be done and you have to be there for the team. Uh, people skills. Uh, you cannot uh, only talk about your group as their robots, their person. So uh, you need to say, to, you need to be uh, understand, you need to be able to read their faces also because there's things that you don't, they won't tell to you, they won't say to you. Uh, you have to have knowledge in finances a little bit, like not just a person, we're talking about the group. Mm -hmm. So like someone in the group has to be have knowledge in that. Uh, also in a space law, very important, we talked about it. And um, you have to be updated about the recent discoveries. Like you're yeah. not going to sell something that no one is going to talk about and no one is going to feel like uh, put money for. Uh, okay, um, 
thank you so much. Um, we, we have a lot of groups to get around to. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but we are uh, planning to uh, collect the paper and the sticky notes so we can kind of see what you've written. And we'd also like to hear from you individually. So let's go ahead and just go to group five, which is in the back corner over here. Um, satellite communication systems. We, we won't forget about ground station, though. We'll come back. <laughs> OK, so we went uh, more from general to more specific as a, it's a very technical type of topic. Uh, so kind of some of the things we describe and organize it with uh, is first general, op is it RF, is it optical type mm. uh, communication, is it a space to ground interface, is it a space to space interface, and what kind of licensing does this use? Is it, is it amateur based licensing, is it commercial based licensing? Uh, and then we went more specific with uh, frequency bands, data rates, modulations, sensitivity, sensitivity factors, and more specifically, how much power does it use? What's the efficiency of the, these communication system, systems? And more onto the hardware is just the interfaces in between the subsystems, between communication systems, uh, what the antennas used, and uh, any other kind of hardware needed to make these communication systems successful, like filters, switches, and uh, possibly other power amplifiers. All right, thank you so much. Uh, let's go on to group number six up here in the front. There are satellite navigation systems. Hello. Um, we're talking about uh, satellite navigation systems, and uh, we would like to break into two separate categories. Uh, the orbit determination and the attitude determination, and these two make the navigation. Uh, what is a satellite navigation? Um, the system uh, we're trying to make uh, should be responsible for determining uh, the attitude of the CubeSat, also uh, its orientation, and then control it to reach uh, the desired state. Um, as for the orbit determination, when we're talking about the conventional CubeSat, you know, uh, surrounding Earth, um, we would need some uh, GPS uh, inputs or TLEs uh, to determine its longitude, latitude, and um, height, altitude. Uh, for deep space uh, mission, we'd like some um, other inputs uh, concerning the orientation of the satellite. Um, so, uh, to determine the altitude, which is the other part uh, of the navigation, uh, we want some measurements which comes from our sensors. And uh, the output of this would be a PWM uh, signal to control the actuators, w which would change the attitude in a way we want. Um, and also find out what the orientation and the angular velocity of the CubeSat uh, will finally be. Um, to do that, we use many sensors, such as gyroscope uh, to determine the angular velocity, sun sensor to see where the sun is, uh, star trackers. Uh, which can position um, mm -hmm. where the stars are, so we can uh, make some assumption for where we are, but it's too expensive, so, <laughs> okay. Um, we also use magnetometers, which uh, can measure the magnetic field of the Earth, so we can also uh, detect our orientation. And the uh, horizon uh, sensors, okay, uh, we, uh, with them we can see the position uh, of the Earth using uh, infrared uh, cameras. Uh, as for the actuators, uh, we can use uh, magnetorchers, which are basil, uh, basically uh, coils. Um, we can produce with them a torque, so we can turn the satellite in a way we want. Okay. Uh, reaction will do the same thing, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's a mechanical component. So th uh, there's a lot of navigation types and different systems. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, there are also thrusters, you know, yeah. but uh, for small uh, applications such as CubeSat, it's not li really necessary. I think that's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, let's go on to group seven up here. Uh, satellite payloads, instruments, and hardware. Can someone hold, hold here? Hold it so that everyone can see it. Come stand up, stand up. Don't be afraid. So, uh, hey everyone. Um, so, we thought about um, the payload aspect, and uh, first of all, we uh, started by 
that, that everyone can see it, yeah. We started by thinking about, okay, what aspects does a payload system have or what instruments, hardware, how can we categorize these things? But in the end, we ended up with a different scheme. We ended up, okay, how, which, which, which categories can, can we categorize these payload systems mm -hmm. in? So as a, as a meta level. So, and we ended up with some categories like um, the, um, the payload can be used in, uh, st uh, structured in, in terms of categories. So is, is it used for structure? Is it used as a sensor? Is it used for everything? And, um, or every system, like every hardware, can have these aspects like um, the power, the interface, uh, what kind of mass, or dimensions, and whatever. So you can separate these paylo uh, the, yeah, the payload uh, um, with these under these aspects. And uh, of course, there is this as, uh, aspect as a mission. So is it like mission critical, or is it scientific, or whatever? So, or um, yeah, right. The sponsors. So where does the money come from? So you can even sort your payload. Like, is it like, is it paid by universities? Is it paid by public money? Is it paid by military money or whatever? And the last aspect, I was not part of the conversation. So who did the last part? So for the last part, uh, we said that uh, we must define some uh, requirements uh, for uh, the carrier that will carry the payload mm -hmm. uh, regarding the maximum uh, mechanical stress that our payload can sustain, uh, the maximum acceleration that can sustain, um, uh, the EMI that can uh, receive or can inflict to the carrier, uh, and also finally some environmental parameters, for example, uh, I don't know if there can be humidity there or uh, pressure. Uh, that can accept before being damaged. That's All right, and here we are at uh, ground stations. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that at the home of Satnox, it makes sense to say something about ground stations, but we'll try. Uh, so we have we have started from frequency, which which. Uh, uh, is supported by the ground station for uh, transmission and reception if it is half, du half duplex or full duplex and that relates to the antenna type and the uh, uh, targeting so if it, if it has uh, the rotator or if it actually doesn't need any rotator because it would be a phase array uh, then we are of course interested in uh, the low, low noise amplifier gain or the uh, receiver sensitivity in output power uh, in the modem which, which is supported or the, generally the, the SDR uh, in the communication protocol not only towards the space segment but also communicating between the stations and generally with the, with the users and then of course with the geographical location of the stations and their uh, minimum horizon and such parameters. And last but not least is our software group. So about uh, softwares, like we, at the end of our like brainstorming, we, we raised a question about uh, like the point of view. Is that a point of view of a developer, of a user? But well, during, during our process, we reached three main categories. Like one category that was more linked to like the technical aspect, like the reality, concretely, like what the limitations, the dependencies of the framework you're going to use with your software. One category about uh, more the logical around the software, like the data flow, the interfaces, the inputs, the outputs, the format, and so on. And also we add a life cycle category uh, concerning like what's uh, like what's the version control around the software, what's, the, what's around the software that is not really included on, on the o two other categories. Well, we, we reach this point. We have a question about, for example, the people, the community about this software, the software aspect. So for us, it's, it's a key issue, but uh, it's not really fitting somewhere. So we have actually more questions than answers, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> but uh, I think we reached like we have we have many elements uh, that could be in metadata actually of describing a software. 
All right, thanks everyone for your participation. Um, we do have a few more minutes, so I'm gonna, the next slide here. See if this live demo is gonna work. Let me turn that one off, okay. So everyone here just helped to participate in kind of like mini focus groups to help the organization schema. Um, what we also have is an online tool that kind of mimics that, but kind of on, a, on an individual basis. There we go, it's gonna work. <laughs> Um, it's the Metasat schema tool. So here's where you can see um, the current version of the schema uh, that Daniel's been developing. So I'm just gonna walk you through the tool a little bit. So you can choose um, a branch. So we have these three kind of main use cases or branches right now. Um, pops open here. You can use expand all to kind of see the structure. So this is kind of the organization that we've got so far for this. Um, and this is a feedback tool. So if you'd like, if you think that, you know, navigation equipment is actually um, an alternative mission name, for example, you can click and drag and drop it over there. Um, and it just, it just is on your browser. It doesn't actually affect the schema. It's just so you can kind of move things around and reorganize them. There's an option here to add concepts if you think there's something missing. Um, if you think that we don't need any information about the spacecraft bus, you can drop it over here in orphans to kind of say that um, it's a concept that you think is useless. <laughs> um, just a couple other features. We have an undo button, so if you change your mind, you can do that and it'll go back to where it came from. You can redo things. Um, you can save in the browser. You can name it, you know, uh, whatever you want it to be. It will save to your browser. Um, you can load up a previous thing that you've saved. You can also export it and share it with other people and they can import it. So if you wanna you know, send your progress to someone else. Um, one other thing is there's a feedback form here. You put your name, your institution, your email so we can reach out to you. We just, we just collect this just so we can talk, you know, research, uh, reach back out to you and ask questions. If you have any comments and then submit it, it sends an email directly to Daniel. And that's all it goes to just to Daniel, no one else. <laughs> so um, again, that's kind of like a feedback tool that we have that it's kind of like this focus group, but on an individual basis, yes. Um, yeah, so a version of this schema um, is or will soon be available um, in our GitLab, so Daniel's also going to talk about that. So I should say that this is kind of just a visualization tool. Um, it's not a representation of what the schema actually looks like, it just kind of helps us organize our thoughts on where things belong. Um, so that's this. So, but Daniel's going to talk more about what the schema actually looks like and where to get it. Let me close that. All right. Okay. So the schema is going to be in JSON LD format. Um, we chose LD for a few reasons. Mostly is because you could provide context for your um, vocabulary. Uh, so we know, for example, if uh, let's say address under, this is for an example under launch service provider. We know that we're talking about address that we're referring to schema.org's definition of address. So it provides some form of uh, authority control. Um, and we also chose LD because it's easy to crosswalk between RDF and XML. Um, so if you want, you could contribute or create issues on our LD directly instead of using the sorting tool by going to that link on our GitLab. Um, so we're going to be rolling out um, unofficial and official um, versions of the schema within the next few weeks. Um, you also could just follow it there. I also would recommend that on schema.space to sign up for our newsletter. Um, that would be uh, the best way to follow our, uh, our progress. So. Yeah, and also please do reach out to us um, throughout the rest of the conference. We'd really like to hear from you about what you think of the schema so far and what you think we should have or what, you know, what, what should be changing. Um, we really want to hear from you, from the community, to build something that will be useful for everybody. So this is our contact information and our web pages. And um, thank you. <laughs>